Just a few years ago, Fanatec was the brand in sim racing hardware and it still is for many. The boom during the COVID years saw Fanatec and its company Endor AG soar to unprecedented heights. It was also the first brand to offer more affordable direct drive wheelbases such as the CSL DD. So we would not blame you if you did not have it on your 2024 bingo cards that the company behind it all would file for insolvency this year, all in the middle of a story that might have potential as a movie script. But how did we get here? Let's look at the whole Fanatec saga so far and see what American computer peripherals giant Corsair has to say about the situation and how they are involved in the plot, because we got some official answers from them that you might find interesting later in this video. Welcome back to Overtake, I'm Michel and if you would have told me that the biggest story in our industry in 2024 would be a business thriller involving arguably the biggest name in sim racing hardware, I would have not believed a word. Yet here we are in August of 2024 and Endor AG and its hardware brand Fanatec are seriously on the ropes. The biggest bombshell was dropped just this week as Endor announced to have filed for insolvency. But that was only the latest chapter of a story with many twists and turns. So let's look back at how we got to this point. The 2023 Black Friday sale is probably the best starting point to this story. As always around Black Friday, companies offer great deals on their products and Fanatec was not an exception. In fact, the company had an entire week of deals lined up, much to the joy of many sim racers. That joy soon turned into annoyance and outright anger, however, when deliveries took much longer to be fulfilled than expected. Sim racers took to Reddit, X Twitter, the Fanatec forums and other outlets to vent their anger, even as late as May 2024, which is when Fanatec admitted in a blog post that they had oversold the Clubspot Formula version 2.5 steering wheel during their Black Friday campaign it became clear that the company was facing considerable delivery issues. It took until Easter until things really started picking up. On March 28, Endor AG announced that its founder and CEO, Chief Executive Officer Thomas Jakamaier, would be dismissed from his role effective March 31st. This was, quote, a key condition by the landing banks for the extension of the standstill agreement until June 30, 2024. There was no way to sugarcoat it anymore. Endo and Fanatec were in trouble. The company appointed Andreas Ruff as its new CEO on April 15. His first area of focus would be to tackle delivery issues. Ruff had previously been a business consultant, mostly in the food and beverage industry. He would also be appointed as the Chief Restructuring Officer CRO later. Despite this, Fanatec and F1 Sim Racing announced an extension of their partnership on a multi-year deal on April 26. Of course, Fanatec is also still the title sponsor of GT World Challenge Europe, the GT3 series, as well as the Gran Turismo World Series, and they are still official eSports WRC partner as well. Two days prior to this, Endor had published a press release that informed about a recapitalization process being set in motion on coordination with the banks. Discussions with investors were being held, with one investor group supposedly being led by former CEO Jakamaya. The intention was to enter the Star Rook process, which is a stabilization and restructuring framework for companies under German law. Simply put, Staruk, if successful, can lead to the avoidance of bankruptcy in cooperation with selected debtors. Around this time, Endor's stock prices decreased by around 90% when compared to the same time frame the year before. And financial officer Matthias Koch stated that a liquidity requirement of 25 million euros is expected until October 2024. Early May, Corsair emerges as the front-running investor. The US hardware manufacturer produces PC components and gaming peripherals, but not for sim racing yet. At this point, Endor AG stepped off approximately 70 million euros is mentioned for the first time. 
The plan was for Corsair to provide emergency funding to stabilize the company before eventual taking over a debt-free Endor AG. This would also mean that Endor would no longer be a public listing on the stock market once the takeover happened. The lending banks approved this plan a week later and a binding agreement was expected to be signed in mid-June. Then it would be submitted to the restructuring court in Munich. Before this happened, however, the Fanatec Rebel Alliance entered the fray. On May 29, this self-proclaimed alliance took over the Fanatec Facebook page with the intent of shining light on the hostile takeover attempt of Corsair. Shortly after it appeared, the post was removed and Fanatec had regained access to the page. That wasn't the only news of the day, however. Endor announced an adjusted revenue forecast and the withdrawal of its EBITDA earnings forecast published in February due to significant forecast uncertainties. These earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization is essentially a measure of a company's profitability. What happened in the Landshut headquarter of Endor, meanwhile, was that the stabilization plan was finalized and submitted to the court on June 3rd. In the same press release that announced this, Endor confirmed that the current shareholders would receive no compensation once the company was delisted from the public market. Two days later, on June 4th, Corsair announced its first ever sim racing hardware, showing a full-blown rig capable of handling even high-end peripherals. Endor and Fanatec were not mentioned in regards to this uh, yet-to-be-named rig. Other than the standstill agreement with the landing banks being extended on June 28, this concluded a relatively quiet month then in June. Things kicked off with a press release on July 1st informing about the extension of CEO Ruff's contract until September 30 as well as the first Corsair payment of 4 million euros. The bigger news was that Corsair already owns several design trademarks and patents for Fanatec products and even the brand trademark as we reported on July 2nd. This has been the case since late May 24 and is a result of Corsair taking collateral against the loans they provided Endor AG with. Even a yet to be announced Porsche-like Vision GT sim racing wheel is among the IPs that have changed hands, plus multiple wheelbases and the designs for the QR1 and QR2 quick release, among several other products. Two weeks later, on July 16, the same day that rumors of Endor's own supplier, Endor Technologies Shenzhen, sees production and delivery due to unpaid bills as shown by YouTuber Laktausch emerged. Endor announced that the local court of Landshut had ruled in favor of two Endor shareholders. The shareholders would be allowed to hold an extraordinary general meeting. The main goal of this meeting was the withdrawal of confidence from the management board members, including CEO Ruff and CFO Chief Financial Officer Kosch. The board responded by stating that this would jeopardize the Starok proceeding which leads us to the final chapter of the Fanatec saga for now. On July 30, Endor AG announced that it had filed for insolvency as the Staro proceedings had failed. In part due to the planning extraordinary general meeting of the shareholders who supposedly failed to show any viable alternatives to the Staruk, Corsair pulled out of its strategic investor role due to quote, ongoing disruptions. Although uh, the Endor board is still optimistic about the company taking over eventually. The same press release also implies that decisions by the previous management, such as the construction of a new bigger headquarter in Landshut, have created the situation of financial difficulty in the first place. In the meantime, Fanatec will continue to operate as usual, so service for things like warranty claims is supposed to continue without restrictions. We also asked Corsair about this new development and the company is still interested in acquiring Endor. If this fails to materialize and Endor ended up with a different owner, the Corsair-owned IP would go back to Endor. Corsair does not intend to release products using the Fanatec brand if it cannot acquire Endor. So they want both, the company and the IPs, not just the IPs. That's what they say right now. Either way, at least Fanatec as a brand should not go anywhere, we'd hope. It's hard to find similar cases in our industry, but Zytec is maybe the only 
good example of a brand living on through acquisitions. They produce gaming peripherals, including racing wheels. So uh, the sim racing veterans might even remember them from back in the day, SciTech. Yeah? Anyway, SciTech was acquired by Mad Cats in 2007 and the brand and its assets were bought by Logitech in 2016. Mad Cats went bankrupt in early um, 2017, but has since returned as a brand for gaming peripherals. What we most hope for is that the people at Endor and Fanatec who are just as passionate about sim racing as us will not be the victims of all of this. Our fingers are crossed that they will not lose their jobs as a result of the mess on the business side of things. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.